I mean, I go to Microsoft, right? I mean, and I go to what I heard Kramer say when he said he had trimmed Microsoft, you know, in the last, you know, handful of days, saying he never thought he would do it, trim a stock like that. I think, but, 20... but after Satya Nadella comes out himself and says the next two years are going to be tough, in Jim's mind, that wasn't a buy signal for the stock. There's not always a linear relationship between how well a company, quote unquote, how well a company is doing and what the stock price does. And part of being an investor as opposed to a trader is accepting the fact that you're gonna make investments in businesses that you believe in as long-term holdings, and you're gonna to have to live through periods of time where even though things are going well, you're not being rewarded for that. I think 2020 and 2021 broke a lot of people's brains. And I also think it was a poor introduction to the stock market for the 25 million new investors who started. Because in that 18 month period, there was a linear relationship. You'd say like, which companies are doing the best in America? And any one of them that you named also happened to have had the most red hot stock price in the market. And so it just made such intuitive sense. Apple's doing great. Oh, look, Apple, the stock is up 200%. Microsoft, like, go down the list, name every software company. Fundamentally, they were doing great and their stock price is doing great. I wish it were always like that. I wish it were always that simple. So you could have a scenario where fundamentally on the ground, Apple, Microsoft, um, Alphabet continue to do very well, but their share prices don't reflect that over the course of a quarter, two quarters, maybe a full year. You have to become accustomed to this being the norm. 2020 is not the norm. You don't always get rewarded in real time for how well a company is doing on the ground.